This tutorial will cover a step-by-step -step process on how to design this Ramadan intro project with After Effects. Creating and animating the background. We have all our assets ready in the project tab. Let's add a, a create a comp for the background with the following parameters. Let's create a solid for our background. Let's add a gradient ramp effect. With the following colors. Let's change the radiant shape to radial. Let's edit it further. Now let's add a pattern. Let's introduce a pattern to the comp. Let's scale it so that it covers the entire comp. Let's create an ellipse. Let's change the blend mode of the pattern to multiply. Let's add a circle using the ellipse tool. Make sure it is centered at the comp. Before you create the circle, make sure that none of the layers are selected in the timeline. Let's reposition the circle right at the center of the comp. Let's check where our anchor point is. Make sure that it is centered also at the circle. Let's reposition the circle so that it covers the entire area of the comp. Okay, let's add a keyframe to this to the scale. Let's change the scale. Before we do that, let's change the scale to 100. I think uh, let's retain the actual the size before. Let's add a keyframe here. Let's move 50 keyframes forward. Let's add another keyframe here. Let's change the first keyframe to zero. Let's preview it and see what we have. At this point, let's use the pattern as a track mat for the circle. Let's apply the alpha mat to it. Let's preview it to see what we have. Let's create another solid layer and rename it as our flares. Let's add the following effect to the flares. Select the flare layer and add the following effect to the flare. We're adding a fractal noise to it, a fractal noise effect to the flare layer. Let's change the fractal type to dynamic progressive. The noise type to spline. Let's increase the brightness to 60 and the contrast to 272. Uh, let's change the value of the complexity to 1. At this time we should add an expression effect to the evolution. Pressing and holding on the alt to do that. In our timeline, let's add this effect. Time multiplied by 150. Let's throw down the transform for the fractal noise. Let's increase the scale to an appreciable amount of 755. Value of 755. Okay. At this point in time, at this point in time, let's add another effect to the flare. Effect to the flare. Let's throw down the output circle and select ramp blue. Let's double click here. 
to change the color using this value the, with this color with the following values okay let's double click here and add another color let's scroll it down 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 set that to this arrow so that it vanishes at this point in time we will change the opacity of the flare to 35 uh, let's change the blend mode to screen let's preview it to see what we have finally animating the crescent and the lamp let's pre-compose the following, la following layers and rename it as our background let's create a new icon for the crescent and the lamps with the following parameters let's add the crescent and convert it to a 3d layer let's go to the initial point here let's animate the position by separating the by separating the dimensions we'll be animating using the z position so we hide both the x and y positions so let's add a keyframe here let's move 30 keyframes let's say 50 keyframes so what let's add another keyframe here let's go back to the first keyframe let's add a negative 2600 for the z position so that it moves the crescent moves out of the comp let's select all the key let's select all the keyframes let's right click keyframe assistant is is okay at this point we'll add a, a shadow to the crescent but before we do that let's toggle transparency to see what we have so let's create a shadow the ellipse one the ellipse two sorry let's zoom in further let's move this shape down the crescent before we do that let's let's undo let's undo that with the shape tool selected let's click here to create max let's create another max inside the already created one let's throw down the max let's increase the feather for the max let's reduce the opacity down a bit let's let's increase the let's add an a negative 12 to the expansion okay let's swirl everything down now let's move let's rename it to shadow let's move it beneath the crescent let's let's untoggle transparency for now let's fit the comp let's select the crescent and press you to unveil all the the keyframes we've added now let's select the keyframe for the crescent let's go to the graph editor let's select the z position for the for the crescent let's press control and hold and click here to add another keyframe here you want to create an overshoot okay now let's move out of the graph editor we have another point created here an overshoot created here okay at this point then let's move out of all the keyframes let's parent the shadow to the crescent let's parent the shadow to the crescent so that they all move together let's reposition the crescent using the x position right up to this point the x and the y position right up to this point okay 
Now let's create another comp that will house all the layers for the background, the crescent, and the other elements. And rename it as a, and let's give it the name of a main. So these are the parameters we're using. So in the mains, let's introduce our background. And also introduce that of the crescents and the lamps. And let's preview it to see what we have. Later on, we'll come and sort out the timings for the all the layers. But for now, let's continue working on the lamps, the crescent and the lamps for now. But this is what we have for now. Now let's introduce the lamps. Let's let's convert the lamp to a 3D layer. Let's scale the size to 60. Let's reposition it to this point or at this point. Let's press P. Let's transform the position. Before we transform, let's separate the dimensions first now we'll be animating the y position so let's hit let's add a keyframe here let's move 30 frames for it add another keyframe okay let's move the the, the point here and let's drag the last keyframe to this point Let's move to this point. Let's add another keyframe. So let's edit the first keyframe. Let's move the lamp out of the comp. Let's move to the middle keyframe. Let's create an overshoot. Let's preview it. At this point, we'll split the layer by pressing Shift Ctrl D split the layer let's add let's select the first layer or the splitted lamp layer let's add a rotation keyframe here we'll be using the z rotation let's add a keyframe here let's move 30 frames let's move 50 cream 50 keyframes for it let's add another keyframe Let's move 50 keyframes, 50 keyframes or 30 keyframes for it. Let's add another keyframe with the first keyframe. With the first keyframe, with the first keyframe. Let's add a, a 20 rotation value to the first keyframe. Let's move to the middle keyframe. The last keyframe. I mean, let's add a negative 20 value here to create a swing rotation. Let's preview it to see what we have. Okay, let's select both lamps and pre-compose it. And rename it to lamp 1. Let's duplicate the layer. Let's create an overlap. Let's create an overlap. Definitely, we might need to change the position. But before we do that, let's convert both layers to 3D again. Okay, let's move the point here. Let's select. Okay. At this point, let's select lamp one. Use the pan behind or anchor point to let's reposition the anchor point 
let's go back to our move to and reposition it here let's move it behind with the z2 let's use the y2 to, to move it up a bit let's scale the size of the lamp 2 to 30 30 it's a, and a bit okay let's scale it to 60 let's see okay let's reposition it using the y yet again okay the main comp let's preview what you have so far let's preview it So at this point in time, we are done with the crescent and the lamps. Animating the nose and the lamps. Let's create a comb for the nose and the lamp. With the following parameters. Let's introduce our table. Let's reposition it here. Let's convert it to a 3D. Let's add a, Z, a X position. Let's separate dimension first. Let's add, a, let's add a X position. Let's move 30 frames forward. Let's add another keyframe. Let's move the pointer here. Let's add a keyframe. So with the first keyframe, let's move the table out of the comp. With the middle keyframe selected, with the model keyframe selected, let's create an overshoot. Let's create an overshoot. Let's add the honey pot. Let's convert it to a 3D. Let's increase the scale. Let's say 150, or let's say 160. Let's reposition it. Let's add a Z position to it. Let's say an X position, rather. Right I think we can uh, further move with the position. Let's let's adjust the position to this point so that we have more room for the lamp. Okay, let's add a X position. Let's separate dimension. Let's move fifty frames forward. Let's add another keyframe. Let's move the pointer here. Let's add another keyframe also to create for the overshoot. Let's select the first keyframe. Let's move the honeypot out of the comp. Let's move to the middle keyframe. Let's create a little bit of an overshoot. Let's prove you what we have. Let's duplicate the any part by pressing Ctrl D. Let's press U to show all the keyframes. Let's select all the keyframes. Let's right click easy ease.
let's let's do that for the other honey pot right click it keyframe assistant right click keyframe assistant easy ease let's do that for the table too right click keyframe assistance easy ease let's select the honey pot for the first one let's press you to see the keyframe let's select both honey pot let's press you to show all our keyframes i think we might need to reposition the second honey pot as a follow make sure that we are on the last keyframes let's select all the keyframes and move the x position further let's move the, the y position down here let's add the dates bow let's scale let's scale the size a bit for the dates let's reposition it here let's reposition it here i think we might also need to reposition the honey pot for the second honey pot make sure all the keyframes are selected be on the last keyframe let's move it a bit here let's zoom in let's press fit to see okay let's add let's convert it to a 3d let's add, add an x position the separate dimensions let's add a keyframe here let's move 50 or 30 keyframes forward Let's add another keyframe here. Let's move it a bit forward to create another keyframe in the middle. Let's select the first keyframe. Let's move the honeypot out of the comp. Let's select the middle keyframe. Let's create a, a bit of an overshoot. Let's select all the keyframes right click keyframe assistance easy ease let's add the lamp let's convert it to a 3d let's place it here right here let's code the size a bit for the light let's position it here this time around we'll add a z position to the lamp let's press you to unveil it here at this point let's add a z position to the light Let's add a Z position. Let's move 30 keyframes forward. Let's 50 keyframes forward. Let's add another position here. Let's select the first keyframe. Let's move it out of the comp. Okay. At this point, let's create a middle let's create a middle keyframe over here so let's undo let's move our keyframe here let's select all the keyframes let's right click easy keyframe assistance easy ease 
let's preview all what you have now let's delay one of the anipods the entrance of one of the anipods let's select both anipods let's create more room over here let's create an overlap for the anipods this point let's create an over undo let's select only one of the over pot of the honey pot let's create an overlap here okay so now let's preview what we have now let's create a glow for the lamp here animating the text let's create a, a com for the test with the following parameters so i'll type my text here ramadan we'll be using this font The sketch Ramadan font. Let's give it a font size of uh, let's say let's give it a font size of uh, 250. Let's reposition it here. Let's reposition the anchor point also at the middle point. Let's change the color to white. Let's highlight it and change the color to white. okay let's convert it to no we don't need to convert it to a 3d let's hold on let's add a gradient ramp to it with the following colors or parameters let's add a gradient ramp let's change the black to this value ff we change it to ff 96 0 d 0 d let's change the white to f d 9 f 9 d e b 1 okay let's also add a readout shadow Let's add a radial shadow to the mix. Radial shadow to the mix. Uh, let's untoggle the transparency. Let's add a radial shadow. Let's move it here. Uh, let's zoom in so we see what it's doing. Just, just, just let's display around these values or well, let's move to be specific let's move this circle here okay let's see let's let's call the distance a bit yeah let's call this distance okay let's leave it at this value at this point let's reduce let's leave the opacity at 50 it's all good now let's add our text animation so let's throw down the text let's use it the animate button let's add a scale let's add a scale value yeah, let's increase the scale let's see Okay, we we'll leave it at 276. Let me fit the comp here to see what we have finally. 
let's also add our opacity let's add an opacity and also a blur uh, let's add an opacity value of 118 let's add a blur of 0 okay but before we do that let's select both the opacity and blur and let's reset it to their value so that we finally see what we're doing let's move up a bit let me create more room over here let's scroll down so now you're using the range selector for one we'll be using the offset for our animation let's click here on the offset but before we do that let's undo what we've done let's play with the end value over here let's play with the end value over here okay let's add an offset value here let's make it negative 11 let's move 50 frames forward and change the value to a positive 11 okay now let's throw down the advance let's change the unit base to index let's change the shape to ramp up let's preview what we've done so let's preview it so far let me twirl it down a bit okay now let's move to the first value here let's move to the last keyframe and increase the offset value make sure the last keyframe is selected and move it down to the point that everything remains comes to normal now let's move down we can now work on the blur values let's increase the blur value to 118 118 and the opacity to 0 okay so let's see what we have finally okay i think we can still work on the the first offset value we can work on the value over here yeah let's see what do you have let's work on the values you have over here for the offset Okay, let's change the first value to negative six. Let's say negative zero six, negative zero point six. And the uh, the first the last keyframe here to seven. Plus this seven. Let's change the end value to four. Let's preview it and see what we have. Okay. Let's scroll it down. Let's add another text to it. Let's toggle our transparency. Let's change the font to Goron, Goron HTF, HTF, bold condensed. Let's move it down here. Let's, uh, let's select both text and move it up a bit. Let's select both text again and move it right here to this point let's change the anchor point for the second test the first layer I mean 
let's move the anchor point to the middle let's come back to our timeline let's press on the hyphen key on the key tab there's a there's on the keyboard there's a key on above the tab key which is the world cut key let's press it okay so this is what we have now so now let's select layer the second layer which is ramadan let's swirl it down let's swirl it down let's swirl the animator key down let's select from this point right up to the blur value let's select it and press ctrl c let's so that we can copy all the keyframes we assigned to the second layer and transfer it to the second layer which is the curry so at this point we can press ctrl v to paste it so let's select both let's roll it down let's select both keyframes and press you to see all the keyframes that we've given to both layers let's press the wildcard key that's the key above the tab key on your keyboard again so we can exit so let's see what we have finally okay we can still adjust that of the the, the animation for the, the first layer we can still adjust it let's see what we can do let's press the world cut keyboard that's the key above the tab key on your keyboard let's twirl it down let's play with the uh, easy high and easy low values for that it's it's under the advanced tab let's click it let's make our first let's make the easy high let's give the easy high a value of 100 and that of the easy low a negative 100 value so now let's let's, let's exit it and see what we have now okay so it has been resolved it has been resolved let's see okay at this point in time let's add another text let's add another text Before we do that, let's change the the font base to light condensed. Let's reduce the size to let's say one hundred. Okay, let's keep editing the test. Saturday. Let's keep editing the text. Think we can still reduce the size of the font. Okay, let's zoom in. Let's increase the size of the font a bit. okay we can also change the let's fit it to view let's create more room over here let's change the anchor point for this text let's change the anchor point for this text let me zoom in change the anchor point let's fit it to view let's also animate this text Let's animate the test. Let's swirl it down using the animate test. Let's add a position value here. Let me create more room over here. Let's add another. Let's add the opacity value. So let's 
let's change the value for opacity to zero let's scroll down the range selector we will be using the start key so let's add a keyframe to the start let's move 50 cranes uh, 50 uh, 30 keyframes forward one two three let's increase it to zero let's see so let's so let's change the value of the start to 100 so this is what we have so now let's so at this point we are done with the with the text with animating the text let's move to the main and add the following let's add a ritual here down let's add our our mills and the text so let's see where our mills and the text are where our mills and text so we have our mills and text let's let's shut it here let's search for our mills we have our mills here let's introduce it to the main comp so let's preview what we have so far okay now let's also introduce the text let's add a camera to the background we'll be using the 50 mm we'll be using a 50 mm for the camera before we do that let's split our view to two views horizontal now let's arrange all our layers okay so let's adjust the timing of the layers Let's draw down the camera. Let's draw down the transform. Let's create some room. Let's move to the first keyframe. Yeah, let's hit all on the key keyframes over here. Let's move further. At this point, we'll be using the camera to with the orbit tool that's with the mouse the right click on the mouse let's use the orbit tool uh, let's zoom with the left with the right click let's zoom in 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 with the middle click let's move to the right side a bit let's zoom in okay let's go back let's see what we have okay so at this point right at this point right at this time frame let's copy all the keyframes here Control C, Control V. Let's paste it. So let's see what we have now. So we have the crescent being introduced again here. So let's preview it. Let's preview it again. So this is what we have. Let's move the, the timeline further here at this point. Let's zoom in. Let's zoom in. Let's zoom out rather. 
Let me see. Let's zoom out right there. Uh, let's let's move it to the right side. So that we, to the right side. Using the, the middle click on your mouse, let's adjust it a bit here. We see that we have our lamps being exposed at this area. So let's sort that one out by using the let's let's select go back to our, our move tool. Let's see if we can move it uh, backward uh, forward a bit. Sorry. Okay, let's go back to the first point. Let's see what we have. Okay, so we've resolved that part. So let's copy the first keyframe again. And paste it right at this point. So let's preview. Let's preview. Let's preview it. So let's preview all what we have now. We are done animating all the elements here. Let's select all the keyframes and apply an easy ease. Let's keyframe assistance, easy ease to ease all. Now let's preview it. Obviously, we can. We need to work on the, especially on the left side of this here. The space over here is too close. Let's see if we can make more room over here. So at this point, let's go back to our camera too. By pressing C, let's zoom. Let's use the right click on our mouse to zoom uh, out. Zoom out at this point. And use our at us at the same point. We use a middle click to bring it down a bit. Let's move it up a bit. Yeah, at this point. Now let's use the right. Let's use the middle click on our mouse to move it a bit to the right side. Perfectly. Okay, so this is what we have. Let's preview it. Thanks for watching. Remember to hit the subscribe button for more videos on graphic design and motion graphics. Ciao.